Huh. What's going on here? This thing just looks terrible. Well, I know why it looks terrible. I know exactly what's going on. The thing's just thirsty, those flower pouches. It's so hard to keep them hydrated in those things. The only way I can see that being a realistic thing to do in the future is to have them up on drip. Anyways, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. You see what's going on out here? Water in the sun patient. The vigorous orange, or electric orange. Not the fit, you, you see it, it's right here. Variegated orange sun patient. I have been getting a lot of comments and inquiries from people about their sun patients dying. And since I'm, you know, dealing with this sickly looking plant right here, that well, we can just talk about it. What's going on there? Spoiler alert, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. I have multiple ideas, so I thought I'd just rattle off all those different ideas. Maybe some of those things will fit and stick, and they might be a solution to your problem. And ultimately, what I think might be the real problem, it's not really going to be helpful to anybody. Just That's the spoiler. I'm sorry. Well, some patients are dying. Don't know why. When some patients first came out, they were really popular, and the reason they were so popular is because, one, it was an impatient you can grow in the full sun, even in warm climates. So your regular just plain old impatient you buy cheap as an annual at your nurseries typically those need morning sun and afternoon shade depending on how warm your climate is they can actually take a lot of sun but again there are environmental factors at play there hot dry climates not so much they'll just die I, a lot of hot dry climates you can't grow them period but you, you get you know what i mean whereas the sun patient they're good you can stick them in the sun afternoon shade and really warm climates Still a good idea, at least late afternoon sun. They can go a good six to eight hours a day and usually be just fine. And they get big, right? At the start, they were just landscape size, which now they call vigorous. But back then they were called landscape. They got over 30 inches wide and high. It turned into just big bushes full of flowers. Now they call them the vigorous and you don't see them for sale as often. They've been replaced with the compacts. I think they figure out that not everybody wants these gigantic gargantuan impatience in their garden. That doesn't fit for everybody. It's more difficult to work with for containers. And uh, there are a lot of reasons to go ahead and try and make them smaller. So they did. Probably if you're growing them, you probably have a compact. They're supposed to bloom longer. So even when you move into a cooler season, they're supposed to keep blooming for you. Mine don't usually experience any type of cold damage until it's about 28 degrees. And multiple days of 28 degrees Fahrenheit, that'll do them in. But they can usually take a light frost. Again, there are environmental factors at play there, right? I have pavement and a pool out here. So that does make a big difference with the cold and what they can tolerate. The cold tends to be more brief with those warmer things surrounding them. And they're supposed to start blooming earlier in the season, right? They kind of do, sort of, I guess. I feel like they're right on par with a new guinea as far as all that's concerned. They haven't noticed a big difference between them and those, but those are the, like the big selling points that they had when they first started selling these things. But there appears to have been a change. It's one I haven't experienced yet, but I'm hearing about it from a lot of y'all and it's that people are saying, you're planting your sun impatience and they're dying on you. And that's unusual because they're generally a pretty straightforward plant. Good amount of sun, like I said, six to eight hours a day. They'll bloom in less sun than that, just not as heavily and they'll have more of an open habit to them. And uh, well-drained, organically rich soil. It doesn't even have to be that organically rich. If it's not, you can just fertilize them. It's supposed to be simple. So why are they dying? From most people who I've talked to and have reached out to me about this, I'm asking them, well, how long ago did you plant them? Where did you plant them? All of those things. And the consensus has generally been that they got planted. And then within about two to three weeks, they started to wither away and wilt and just look terrible. So that tells me that there could be a few different things going on there. One, the main thing I think about is transplant shock. Was the plant in a greenhouse for a long time? Then it went outside. That's going to send them through. A, I don't want to say an emotional, but maybe they're like having little minty bees, little mental breakdowns for the sudden patients. Or was the root ball disturbed a lot when it was transplanted? Is there something in the ground digging underneath them? Those are all possibilities. Starter fertilizer, was that applied? That really shouldn't hurt the plant though. These are sturdy enough, they can handle starter fertilizer. They planted too early, was the ground not warm enough? That can be an issue for them sometimes. They do like the ground nice and warm, generally 65 degrees. That's a good sweet spot to get them in the ground so that they don't skip a beat. We'll start to root out and get moving. So those are all a lot of factors that can be at play there for why the plant is on a decline within a few weeks of being planted. But for a lot of people who I'm talking to, it doesn't sound like these are factors at play. So what is it? I don't know. Just weak tissue culture? That happens, right? Enough time passes. These have been on the market for a while and you start to have to improve things. 
over the last few years, there will be a new one that pops up and then the next year it comes out and the tag will say whatever variety it is and then improved underneath. Proven Winners does that, a lot of growers do that. Sometimes you send something out to the market and it's in mass production, you get some feedback and something's wrong. Then it can disappear for a few years and come back and hopefully whatever was wrong has been fixed. I'm guessing that that might be at play with a lot of these or the other factors that I talked about because they do like things warm to get going. I know I said that they can take cooler temperatures, but that is once they become large established plants. So maybe they're getting planted too early. Maybe your climate's too dry because they do like humidity. If you live someplace where you have really cool nights and big shifts up and down during the day, that can affect their flowering and their growth and their risk for disease, mostly like mildews and things that rot them out, funguses. They were being sold as something suitable for all these different climates when really are they, they like things warm, extreme shifts can upset them if the shifts move things down where it's trending cool, that is, for prolonged periods of time, then warm, then cold. They don't like that. And the dry air, they don't really like that either if it's really hot outside. They end up just frying and looking not so great. They're overexposed to sunlight, I mean. Maybe soil conditions too. They like things more on the acidic side. Clay soil, not going to be great for them. You have to really be mindful about how you're watering the plant and where you have them positioned. If you have clay, there could be too much water sitting around the roots. They are a plant where you can plant them into a water system. If the water's circulating, people tuck them into waterfalls and water features sometimes. But again, that's oxygen-rich water. You're growing them hydroponically when that's happening. That's not the same thing as an anaerobic mud hole in the ground, right? With bacteria down there and the oxygen and... It's just a whole entire recipe for disaster. Drainage could be a factor. Maybe there's not meant for some people's soil. Mid-season dieback, that's been a thing. And when it comes to mid-season dieback, I have a few different thoughts. The main one is more, is it the sun shifting? You know, the angle of the sun changes. And I know in my backyard, I live at the bottom of a hill. So there's a lot of shade towards midsummer and on from there. And they don't get as much sun at that point. And that's when I have to start really paying attention. Like, are these going to start getting mildews and molds and funguses and rot and those things? I have to adjust watering, bring the watering down so they're not getting as much sun. Just because I plant things one way in the spring doesn't mean my care is going to stay the same for the entire season, all the way into fall. The whole growing season, I mean, in the spring and summer are different seasons. Sometimes you have to make adjustments. So that could be a part of it when it comes to mid-season dieback. And just extreme vigor. Sometimes plants that are made to grow extremely vigorously have some flaws. So you can end up having a plant where you're getting tons and tons of growth above ground, but it's not matching with what's going on down below. So maybe they're not getting proper drenches, right? Where they're getting just enough to keep the foliage up and keep them moving and growing because they've been designed to do that but the root system isn't necessarily going out, branching out and developing how we would want it to for the plant to have the health and vigor to grow all season long. For that, you just need to water more deeply, preferably in the morning before the heat of the day kicks in. You can water them during the heat of the day. These things wilt down for me all the time during the summer and then I give them a drink, but I try and stick the hose down below more onto the soil. It's been mulched, right? We wanna mulch the soil so that the surface isn't just baking in the sun. There's something to help protect the surface. So it's not as much shock to the plants when they're being watered. They don't do much with that right away, but once the sun starts to move off of them, they go ahead and they fill back out, fluff back up and look okay. But if that happens repeatedly, multiple times over and over and over again, well, then that'll lead to the demise of the plants also. And this is all troubleshooting that is mostly just about the plant itself. Not necessarily what we're doing wrong, but a combination of what maybe is going on with how we're treating the plant, with how the plant's been pre-programmed, not really going into pests and disease. When it comes to pests and disease, the best thing to do would be to take a clipping of whatever part of the plant doesn't look good, put it in a sealed container or bag, take it to a local nursery and say, hey, what do you think is going on here? And maybe take a picture of where the plant is in your garden, know what kind of light it's getting and how you've been watering it and what kind of fertilizer it's been getting too, and how much. They'll be able to help you with that, but don't take something into the nursery that's not contained. You don't want to spread something around at the nurseries or even the, there are really easy ways if you're maybe more tech savvy to just use your phone and you can Google image things. You take a picture of it and do a Google search and that can help too. 
And as far as pests go, generally you just want to keep them healthy and happy. It's the best way to prevent pests. Having good airflow and sunlight for them will help prevent pests also. That's really important. That's part of keeping them healthy and happy, right? Did I say happy? Happy. Well, those are just my thoughts. Turbo saying it's time to go. Comment down below. This is a group effort here. If you're having trouble with your sun impatience, maybe I said something that applies to you, something you can work with there, or maybe somebody will have commented something that's helpful to you or something you can relate to. I don't know. It's a community. Hopefully we're all growing and learning together with this one. Oh, no, 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 no. One other point. The orange, these variegated sun patients, the ones that are orange, sometimes, oftentimes when I plant these, they just look like garbage for a few weeks, right? They just, they throw a fit. They don't like it. They look like they're on the decline sometimes for up to a month. And then all of a sudden they just rebound and are absolutely beautiful. So sometimes that just happens with them not great but some plants are just like that and I have that's been my experience with the variegated orange sun impatient the name is right here it's literally right there vigorous tropical orange I keep beating around the bush variegated so it's the vigorous tropical orange specifically that's been an issue I've had with them for the last few years I know from one of y'all that I've talked to and really loves these plants that there's an improved variety now but they tell me that there's just doing the thing I'm just telling you about. How it's planted, they look like garbage. And like I said, in my experience, I just have to give them time. And they usually all of a sudden just go poof and look amazing. But it takes some time. Shouldn't for plants that are renowned for being so resilient and prolific. But you know, you get it. We've already talked about stuff, tissue culture and whatnot. All right, like I said, comment down below, say hi. If you have anything to relay, that would be wonderful and helpful to everybody. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, you can't see that too much shade. Keep on growing. Bye-bye.